Bop is dead ghetto, quirky roommate. <sighs> well, did, did she? I, maybe. <laughs> I don't know, I think the ending got distracted by the its own plot. <laughs> that was weird. Yeah, it, uh, it was just like funny and cute and then plot. <laughs> and then, uh, it's more like, I'm thinking more like the sort of like, uh, Nolan film sort of warp. <laughs> just get Hans Zimmer <laughs> <laughs> as the ship goes down. For literally anything, get Hans Zimmer, in. like anything at all. Get him to compose a soundtrack for Walk and Work. Just anything at all. <laughs> that, that'd be hilarious. Anyway, this episode is Barn Mates. Yay! As for the plot of this episode. Uh, the plot that the Momos forgot about towards the end. Uh, well, not entirely. Uh, well, uh, let's start uh, Start from the beginning. Peridot just wants Lapis's love. Yeah, Peridot is trying to convince Lapis that living together in this barn would actually work out, but she simply doesn't want to. It's actually a very simple episode for the most part. Peridot and Steven try to convince her... But each attempt just seems to make things much worse. From getting her a card to making a small lake, as you do. But just when Peridot gives up on this, as Lapis just tells her to leave, a ship end up, ends up coming after her. So they all try to just escape and hide from this thing. But it just finds them no matter what. And eventually Lapis just has to almost casually use your power to just knock the ship into yeah, the she ground. she just bitch slaps it out the sky. Never yeah. Um, just amazing. Uh, and at the end, Peridot is at least happy that she cared enough to help. But then, out of the ship emerges a ruby with Ooh. its ruby on its eye. Which looks uncomfortable. <laughs> that, that was a pretty awesome way to end the episode. Because, you know, it's it's actually funny, because that probably, the fact that her rubies on her eye probably doesn't actually mean much. It's not like some great big revelation or horrific thing. But it's just treated as like this, oh shit, moment at the end. I think it's just to make her look a bit creepier than the ruby we're used to. Yeah. <laughs> she said, look, that does make her look kind of badass and awesome. But also a little, oh shit, plot is here. Yeah. Plot is back. Maybe. It'd be funny if... <laughs> Ruby had, had nothing to do with anything. But regardless, uh... Yeah, the episode itself, from, like, uh, describing the what happens in the episode, is really super simple until the end, basically. Yeah, I mean, as an introvert myself, I spend much of this episode going, just please leave Lapis alone for a few hours. I yeah. know you're desperately friends with her, but she needs her time and her space to process the whole being imprisoned and tortured and then imprisoned again thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, maybe, maybe just back off a little bit, Peridot. Yeah. To me, I think that's... Like, this is a... This is one of the most cliched episodes Adventure Time is... Sorry, Steven Universe has ever made. But it works because you kind of see where both of them are coming from, and you can also see what both of them are doing wrong. Like, yeah. Like, you can see why both of them are doing what they're doing. Yeah, it is a good bit. It's just a good bit of characterization. Just Lapis, poor Lapis looks so done with her life in every single scene. Yeah. Right down to, you know, I saw someone comparing her face in one scene. I think right after she sees the, the pool that they've made for her, someone <laughs> just put it next to um, that scene in One Punch Man where he just has the okay face. Yeah. And she. she doesn't want to be friends with Peridot. She straight up decided she doesn't want to be friends with Peridot, and everything Peridot does just makes her dig her heels in more. Yeah. Whereas poor Peridot is so embracing the idea of having friends and being people and living on Earth. Yeah. And she she is trying to do, you know, basically any every anything and anything she can think of to be friends, but she really... It takes her far too long to just ask what she can do to make Lapis more comfortable. I think the thing I find interesting about it is that Peridot is now very much about trying to be friends, but <laughs> she's still, like, somewhat of an asshole about it. Yeah, she's still a bit... She's 
fucking writes fanfic about her and Peridot, uh, her and Lapis. It's a little creepy. Like, yeah. right at the beginning, she's written stories about their friendship, and I'm like, you're writing fanfic, and that's a little bit weird. <laughs> RPF is always a little bit weird. Like, uh, I can, um... The thing is, I can definitely see how someone would not be able to stand this type of person. Like... I'm not sure I know people exactly like this, but I know people are out there like this that, like, you know, try to be really nice and sweet, but do it in just, like, the most self-important ways possible. I just... Yeah, like I said, it might just be an introvert thing, but the fact that people will just non-stop when you're not comfortable being around them doesn't make you more comfortable around no. them. No, no, it really, really doesn't. And... Uh, the best part, best part is that's like her like big thing that she wrote in the card was like you were really good at being interrogated. That information what you had was great. Oh my god, that was a friggin' that was some kind of Vulcan moment. It's like you were useful. Your your presence was logical. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong kind of green alien, but nevertheless. I also love how she, when she realized just how much of a mis- mistake she made with that lake, and she just kind of falls through the inner tube. Like, yeah. Uh, Which it wasn't, I think that was a genuinely nice thought, but also just no one has realized how bad Lapis' PTSD clearly is. Lapis just needs all the hugs right now. Yeah, just infinite supply of hugs. Now. Stat. And then it, it is kind of sweet at the end when just Lapis casually bitch slaps the homeworld ship. I mean, she is powerful. A girl could be ruling homeworld. That Although, also actually, really like... if she's not, that makes me wonder how powerful the homeworld gems are. <laughs> yeah, that was really interesting. And uh, actually, I, what I really like about this is that they don't just suddenly make up or anything. It's, it's, like, even at the end, Lapis still seems kind of pissed at her. But she's like, okay, okay. <laughs> it's like she just she's kind just of like, accepted that she should try at least a little bit. Yeah, she's at least willing to try, and she maybe feels okay to try now, which is nice. <laughs> yeah, I, I also think it's, I love, I love the purity of Peridot's smile when Lapis asks if she's okay. And then Lapis blushes, and I'm like, oh, We have, like, a subsidiary band of the Crystal Gems now. Yeah. It's it's like, you know, the other Crystal Gems are his mom squad, and these ones are, like, his daughters or something, that he's just trying to get settled in a yeah. new home, be happy and safe. Yeah. And, yeah, my last comment is just, holy fucking shitballs, that's a ruby. That's also the comment of the how the episode ends. Pretty much, that I like that's the intended turn. It's like, oh, they're friends. It's cute. What the fuck is going on now? Oh, uh, what else do I have my uh, in my notes? Uh, oh yeah, I love the line uh, where Steven says, "I saw this in an episode of a TV show. I didn't see how it ended, but I'm sure it turned out great." And then he just does the stupid divide the room in half cliche that like a million shows have done and never work out. Yeah, I like how it's, you know, it's kind of a cliche episode, but they are just, you know, lampshades all over the fa- all <laughs> over the place. Yeah. Oh, I also love how Paradox turns all she did and how much in danger she is now because she yeah, yelled at like Yellow Diamond. <laughs> But yeah. she still turns into, a, like, an ego thing. I'm kind of a big deal. A big anti-homeworld deal. Yeah, it's like she's so proud of of it now, of talking yeah. shit to... Um, which, you know, it's kind of that moment of... so you, It's a way of owning your fear about what you've done. How badly you fucked up. It's just like, yep, yeah, nope, I did it. I fucked up. I fucked up harder than any of you. That's something I really appreciate, because uh, I've seen sometimes in some shows where a really fun, interesting villain suddenly becomes good, that they kind of get rid of a lot of what made them interesting in the first place. But instead, but instead, Paradox is basically just a positive version of herself now. She's friends now, but she's still, you know, arrogant and self-important. And, yeah. And that's fine. That's her. Because she's still willing to get down and fight to save planet Earth. Yeah. Build giant drills to save planet Earth. So, go Peridot. Yeah, I don't have a huge amount more to say about this episode. Because it is just... It's very straightforward. Yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, it really is. Until the ending. Oh, I did, I did like the the last log date. She did log date whatever. Facet, whatever! 
<gasps> Nobody cares anymore! <sighs> I said that was the saddest part of the whole episode, is that our little recorder's been destroyed. Oh yeah, I was a little heartbroken with that. I was just like, oh. okay, Levis, I know you don't want to be friends with her, but breaking the tape recorder, that's just rude. Oh yeah, uh, uh, one more little thing is uh, I loved when Lapis used her own wings as blindfolds. <laughs> Like, you can't see the, through those, right? Actually, I can, yeah. It's just a bit blurry. <laughs> that was that was really funny. But, yeah. Uh, that was... That was the episode. Um, I'm not sure what else there is to really say about it. Yeah, that, it's... It's almost... It almost... Uh, yeah, I don't know whether to call it filler or not. I don't think it's filler because it's sort of... Like, obviously, there's probably going to be some moment where, like... Lapis or actually accepts Peridot at some point, and this is kind of the start of that, at yeah. the very least. It was, it was character. But, I mean, maybe because it's more character than plot, it falls under the definition of... Um, but, and it's not necessarily a bad thing for an episode to be filler, too, also. I think this is a problem a lot of writers um, make the mistake of with filler, is that it should... Even if it's not moving forward plot, it should still be doing something with character. Yeah. Like uh, I, I'd actually like argue I wouldn't call it filler in the part in the first place. I don't. I don't tend to like calling things filler unless, like, just nothing of importance happens. But, I mean that. But see, that's what I mean. It's it should be if nothing plot wise happens, then it's filler. But that doesn't necessarily mean that nothing happens. Like, the original definition is just stuff that happens in between plot to pad out, but you should still have something character going. Like, the best way I saw someone describe it is, a show is only as good as its filler episodes, and Avatar The Next, the Last Airbender was next level, because its filler episodes, you know, its filler episodes were like Tales of Ba Sing Se. Yeah. That's a filler episode. But that was just next level character development. Yeah. Well, in this series, it's hard to say that... It's hard to say when something's actually filler because even the stuff that's filler sometimes turns out to not be filler. So, I honestly in a series like this, I don't even think about whether something is filler or not unless it's I don't know. I would call this one filler, but that's not a negative thing. Well, I, I think it's because I usually think of like anime and when they put in filler, it's usually yeah, Let's... that's what I mean. Shitty filler that sh- fill a uh, filler is a great thing for expanding on character develop on characterization yeah. and character backstory and character development. Yeah, but I'm, I'm more used to like when people talk about filler. I usually think of like those type of anime episodes where they take the characters and then just have them do their generic things they're known for doing for twenty four minutes. Like, yep, those characters did the things. That they're known for doing. I think, yeah, the uh, the actual worst thing I've seen lately was the the only thing I've ever seen with filler that comes after the story was Inuyasha. I only found a piece of Rumiko Takahashi released a bonus chapter about the, like a year after the end of Inuyasha, and it was just so pointless, so painfully pointless. We've gotten so far off the topic of Steven Universe. Yeah. 